Hello and welcome to AEL Technology. I'm your tutor Sumit for the course NX10 Milling. We are in chapter 1.1 and in this chapter I'll be just explaining you the history of NX10, the evolution of CNC machines and all. We'll start with NX10 introduction. NX10 is formally known as UGNX or Unigraphics etc. This was first released as uni app by the company called United Compute Computing Incorporation in the year 1972 and this is that time one of the first end user cam products and later this product was sold to so many companies and finally this product is owned by CM Siemens PLM software the latest release is NX 10.0.3 and if you see the survey of conducted by CNC cookbook for the most popular CAM packages the ranking is in top 6 now let us see the evolution of CNC machine there are actually two phases before a CNC machine is fully evolved the first phase, phase in olden days there were no CNC machine and the parts are produced using conventional milling machines and based on the skillness level of an operator you can get a good product but the number of products that is produced is very less so that has given rise the necessity of creating NC machine that is the second phase of the evolution of CNC machine in NC machine we can do 2 to 2.5 D products and in 1950s G codes were generated and these codes were used to run the NC machine but the limitation once again is there are no inputting device and if you want to change a program uh, the inputting device at that time was a program tape and if you want to change the program you again need to prepare a program new program tape and run it in the machine on the third phase this problem is solved by attaching a computer to the machine what happens now is when a program is fed on the memory of a computer the machine control unit process it and send signals to the driving system that is the set of server motors and these motors are used to run the move the tables and spindles when whenever it's required it takes the feedback from the machine and sends it back to the machine control unit and it then sends the next signal so how are we communicating uh, to the CNC machine we communicate with the help of part programs these part programs are CNC instructions when running a part program the part program is interpreted one command line at a time until all lines are completed so the latest machines can read as much as lines beforehand before sending the signals it can forecast what would be the next movements and send the entire signal to the motors the older machines has limitations in that and in older machines you can find that there will be a small time gap in between runnings so to do a perfect programming you have to know some important things like what are the coordinate systems what are the unit are you going to do an incremental or absolute programming what are the coordinates that you want to move the tool what would be the feed, feed rate what would be the spindle speed of the tool do you want coolant on or off and do you want the coolant to be flooded or in a mist form and what are the how are we going to specify the tool that are tool numbers etc so all these are done with the help of some codes like 
G codes that are proprietary codes I use for initial machining setup and establishing an operating condition. N codes are programming line numbers and we have axis codes like X, Y and Z that represents uh, the coordinates. Then we have feed rate codes and spindle speed codes and we have tool codes for each tool and we have some mis miscellaneous codes like uh, spin spindle stop cool and run program stop etc here are few of the uh, the alphabets that represents each programs the o represent the program number n for sequence number g are proprietary functions and x y z are the axis designations r is the radius designation and f is the feed rate designation S stands for spindle speed, H for tool length offset, D for tool radius offset and T for tool designation, M for miscellaneous function. A program, a full written program would look like this with a header with the program number and then tool number and what is the tool that you are going to run and these are those codes starting with a program number and G20 and we can find M codes and all these axis codes, feed rates, spindle speed etc. Now let us see what are uh, the question may come like are are there only single programming language for all the machines in the world? The answer is no. We have different controllers for different machines. The quite famous ones are Fanuc, Siemens, GSK, Mac3, Mazak, Okuma etc. So based on the machine control units you have to create NC program. That doesn't mean that the programming method or a tool path is different for all different units. The post process will take care of uh, the control units post processing once a toolpath is generated you can either generate an NC code for different different controllers with the help of post processor. Now let us see what are the different axes on a CNC milling machine. The basic ones are X, Y and Z. X, Y stands for the table movement and Z stands for the tool movement. And Whenever you attach any new uh, movement to the movement or attachment to the machine, that becomes your uh, next axis. If you attach an indexing attachment, that becomes your fourth axis. And if you have a machine whose table itself rotates and tool head can be tilted to some angles, that becomes your fourth and fifth axis. A very sophis sophisticated machine like Masak Integrex, you can find the there are two spindles, there are lower turret and a machining head spindle that can be swung in this direction and move up and down and that can also move in Y direction. So the machine has fully evolved and you can find I am sure you can find very sophisticated machines in future. Now what are your role in uh, CAM programming? Let's take an example of uh, creating a program that tells a tool to move in this shape and uh, I have mentioned uh, points at each nodes and these are the program that tells a tool to move each point like S, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Since this is not such a uh, complicated profile, the entire program length is only this much. Now look, now let us say how difficult it would be to create a program, um, a part program for this profile. You can mill 
using 2D commands you can mill all this shape you can mill till you get a good rectangle and with the help of a tapered mill you can again provide draft to these walls and with the help of this radius milling and mill you can get a perfect radius on the top but it will take some time to do an entire programming it will take a good time for planning and manufacturing this part what happens if you if you get a part like this I have no clue how much time it will take and I have no clue whether it's possible to do this type of profiles on a manual program in a manual programming method but using a cam software you can easily do that let's say a programmer creates a create some model I mean a designer creates a model and send it to a programmer a programmer then creates a toolpath and then he creates an NC file that will be sent on the machine and the machine cuts the workpiece so these are the common these are the common flow in the cam industry the designer creates a model and sends it to a cam programmer in some industry you can find that the cam program itself will create a 3d model of the part and he will again generate a tool part to cut that part and he sends the tool part to the CNC machine and the machine shop floor produce the part your role is to become your aim should be to become a good cam programmer and AEL technology will be helping you to achieve your goal